Hey Charlers, welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're going to have a little sit down. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and where I come from and all that kind of jazz. And then I had some of my amazing friends ask me some questions about travel, touring, sightseeing, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to answer those questions. Let's get into it. So, I'm Nick, if you haven't guessed that yet from the title of this channel. I come to you guys from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I've been in the hospitality and tourism industry for over 20 years. I know, I don't look it, but it's true. So why did I start on YouTube? It's a great question. So, as everyone knows, 2020 wasn't the greatest year. A lot of things happened and I thought I would try and venture into something a little different so here I am on YouTube showing you guys things that I like to do in travel showing you amazing places that maybe you guys wouldn't be able to see so don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you can come along with me as I show you some more amazing places around here and beyond. Now let's get into those questions. Hey everyone, this is Rachel's Venture, and my question for Nick Tours is, what is your favorite place that you have been sightseeing? Like, for example, have you been to New York and you looked at, through the eyeglass things, at the Statue of Liberty? What is your favorite thing to go see sightseeing? Rachel, that's a great question. One of my favorite places that I have been to would be Italy. I got to experience Italy in 2015 when I did a tour of Europe and I got to see Venice, Rome, Florence and it was amazing. A couple of the highlights of that tour was visiting the Colosseum in Rome. The Vatican City, getting to be in the Sistine Chapel and having a prayer set, taking a gondola ride in Venice on my birthday. What else could you ask for? But then again, you do have Florence and seeing one of the most amazing sculptures in the world. I think that is hands down one of the best places that I've visited so far. There's a lot more still to see out there, and hopefully one day I'll be able to experience them. Well, let's move on to the next question. Hi, I'm Gavin. Hi, Luke. I'm away from Paul Lazer Sea. Our question is, um, what is your favorite port or destination? Um, and if you could go back there, what would you do a second time round? Would you do the same thing all over again? Or would you do something different? Do you have any regrets about what you did when you did go there? So, yeah. Thanks, boys, for that great question. So, my favorite port that I visited on one of my many cruises I've been on has to be St. Thomas. Just the picturesque views and everything there. But one of my favorite places that I went to while I was there is a beach called Megan's Bay. And as you can see, the views are spectacular. The beach is beautiful. The water is so clear. Hopefully one day, I'll be able to go back there. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I might be able to in February of 2022. Hmm. We'll have to see. Let's go on to the next question. Hi Nick, this is Wanda from Cruising for Food and I would like to know what is the one must have that you must take on every one of your trips? Is it a favorite piece of luggage, a journal, uh, some kind of toiletry? Let me know. Thank you so much Wanda for that question. Now, until 2010, I did not have a favorite item to take with me. But after my trip to South Africa, I found the item I needed every trip I go on as of now. It is this. Oh, 
a little backpack. Well, more than a little backpack. It's an everything pack where you can put your laptops, all your cords and devices, and if you just want to take this, enough room for a day or two of clothing. But the one thing that I need to take on every single trip, cruise, doesn't matter where I go to, it's always with me, an umbrella. You never know when you might hit some bad weather and need a little protection from it. So I always have an umbrella with me no matter where I go, even in the Caribbean. Let's get to the next question. Bob from Innocence Abroad. My question for tips would be, what would you recommend somebody do when first boarding a ship? Bob, thanks for that amazing question. So the first thing I like to do when I get on a ship is go up to the sun deck, take a lay of the land, see what's there, see if I have a spot picked out to, you know, get some sun on this pale skin. And then it's down to the promenade deck or the shopping area just to see what's there and get a lay of the land of sorts. But then I always have to find where the best snacks are. So that would be the second or third thing I would do is find all the best snacks on board. Thanks for the question. Let's get to the next one. Hey Nick Tours, this is Greg and Derek from DNG Explorers, and we have a question for you. Alright, so we don't often go to Canada. In fact, we've only been on one cruise. But for those who have never been on a Canadian cruise, what would you recommend your to-do list and what you should bring to go on a Canadian cruise? That's a good question. DNG, thanks for the question. So, Canada, what to bring when coming up here for a cruise or something along those lines. I always suggest a sweater or something nice and warm because we do tend to get a little chilly even in the summertime. It does get a little low in temperature so just something to keep you nice and warm. Also a little windbreaker or jacket or something like that while you're walking around just to keep yourself a little warm as well. So when visiting Canada on a cruise or something like that, you would either leave from the east or west coast. If you're leaving from the west coast, that means you're leaving from Vancouver, BC. Vancouver is a beautiful city with lots to see, very multicultural. A couple of places I suggest you would check out Grouse Mountain, one of the best views in town. You're above the clouds and you see almost everything. Another fun place to go check out is Capilano Suspension Bridge. An amazing place with beautiful forest views and everything there. If you get time, you can also take the ferry over to Vancouver Island and visit Victoria, the capital of British Columbia, and see the Bouchard Gardens. Beautiful, spectacular gardens with amazing views and flowers that you've probably never seen. So, if you're heading over to the East Coast, typically you'll leave from Quebec, Quebec City area. Of course, in Quebec, you must check out the Chateau Frontenac and then you must try and find poutine. What? Poutine. One of Canada's staple foods. Fries, cheese curds, gravy. How could you go wrong with that? Moving on a little bit further, you have New Brunswick and the Bay of Fundy. Beautiful place there. Moving to the next province, you have Nova Scotia and the capital city of Halifax. One of my favorite places to visit there is Pier 21. This is a historic building where all the immigrants from Europe and stuff came through. I have a little bit of history there because my grandfather 
came through there and my father came through there as well. If you do go there and you check the wall of honors, you potentially could see my grandfather's name on the wall there. And then moving on to our smallest province, Prince Edward Island. One of the most beautiful views there. Maybe you would even spy and of Green Gables. I hope that answered your question. Let's go on to the next one. This is Kat from Cheat Meal Food Cat. And what I want to know is what are the types of sightseeing tours? And what are the types of tour packages? Thanks. Kat, that's a great question. What kind of tours and sightseeing packages are out there? There's so many to choose from. I'll just pick a couple of the popular ones that are out there. So the most popular is a walking tour, where a tour guide in a city will take you to a few of the most popular places. They range from an hour to two hour to five hour walking tours, and they just highlight the most popular points of the cities. Then you can get a little more adventurous and do maybe a bicycle tour, where again, they'll show you a few of the most popular places, but the most popular bike tour is a wine tour, where you'll get on a bike and hop to a few wineries, taste some wines, and have some fun. Some new additions to the tour industry is the Segway tour. Really cool, you get on a Segway and they'll take you around just like a walking tour kind of thing, but on a Segway really fun. If you haven't done it, you should check it out. Thanks for the question. Now let's move on to the next. What's up? It's Brad, one half of Chad Cruisers. My question for you is, are hop-on, hop-off buses worth it? Oh hey Brad, hop-on and hop-off tours are one of my favorite ways to see a city. One, you get a narrated tour. Two, you get transportation around the city. And three, they stop in the most popular places of the city. You can get off, see the sights, take a few pictures, and a few minutes later, get on another bus and see another part of the city, all while getting a narrated tour. Best way to see it. But there's another way I like to get around the city. If the city is close to a body of water, some will have a tour. Here in Toronto, it was called the Hippo Tour, called different things in different places, but it's a bus mixed with a boat. I know, crazy, but the tour is similar to the Hop on Hop Off where you get a narrated tour, you get to see the best spots in the city, you don't get off the bus, but you get views from the water. The bus actually transforms into a boat and goes into the water and you get to see the cities from the water. Best views you can get. Let's get to the next question. I'm Maddie. And I'm Scott. From No Maps Need to Travel. So Nick, we have a couple questions to ask you and I'll start off first. My question would be, we would love to go experience a sightseeing tour but we also like to visit and explore on our own. Can you do that at the same time? My question is, on a sightseeing tour, do they cater to certain age demographics? And how do you know what level of activity to expect when you're on a sightseeing tour? Thanks for answering, Nick. Maddie and Scott, those are some great questions and one of the most popular questions to ask when going on a tour. Maddie, let's answer your question first. Yes, you do get some alone time where you get to see the city all by yourself. Usually there is a lot of time during the tours for you to venture on your own, see the city, and do things that aren't part of the itinerary. Usually it's about two to three hours where you get to do whatever you want. Go grab coffee, go grab pastry, take those photos that you wanted to 10 minutes ago when the tour guy was pushing you along because you had to get to the next next appointment. But yes, there's usually a lot of time for you to do whatever you want. 
So now to Scott's question. Is there age limits and such for tours? Not really, but tours are usually catered to people. Different age ranges and such. So when looking for a tour or a tour company itself, check to see what they cater to and such. And the second part of your question was activity level. Usually in the description of tours, they will tell you how difficult. Is there a lot of walking? Are you gonna be going up hills or climbing a mountain and such? Check descriptions. They will tell you everything. They usually will have difficulty levels and such like that. Hopefully that answered your question, guys. So, that's the end of the video. I wanna thank everyone who sent in a question. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I've linked everyone down below, so go down there, give everyone a subscribe, take a look at their channels. They all do amazing content. And don't forget to subscribe.